Hey, welcome back to The Woodcrafter, part two in how to make the keepsake box. Today it's all about the finish and the assembly. If that sounds good, stick around. Hey, so welcome back. We're now about to finish off the keepsake box. I made quite a few errors today and I've left those in the video so you can have a look at them. Um, we all make mistakes, right? But it's what we do with those mistakes and how we learn from them that's more important. So let's crack on. We've got the stuff out of the clamps. Let's pick up the action there and see what we think. So there you go, everything's now out of the clamps. We've just got to clean up these glue marks. Now a little bit of light sanding. But the big job is just preparing this board here. Now obviously we don't need the full length of this board. So to make my life easy, I'm going to cut it down to an appropriate size. So I'm just going to cut the lid slightly bigger than we need and that's purely to save time. If I don't need these parts, why bother working on them? So we'll take a slice in the middle here, it looks good, and we'll use a belt sander to bring that down. Now the best tool actually in a workshop to take your panel and make it smooth is actually a drum sander. Now I don't have a drum sander so I'm going to be using my, my belt sander. If the board's narrow enough you could use your thickness or your planar jointer to bring that flat. You can even use a CNC machine, just put it on there then you could set that up to just give you a light skim. Um, you could hand sand it, you could use a hand plane. I'm going to use my belt sander just to bring this down so it's nice and flat. Not much sanding to do on the box itself, you can see it's come out really quite tidy. But just these areas here where I do have a little bit of glue marks, I'm just going to give that a light sanding, a hand sanding and not electric sander, just to bring that smooth. Okay, job one, let's slice this down to a usable uh, length. Just going to cut it over size, there's our mark, so we'll just take that mark back. I'm going to make a smaller box to go with this, so this scrap piece here I'm going to put on one side, come back to that on another project. Now I'm just looking at this, this piece here is curving in a little bit, so I want to see if I can cut some of that waste out. So I'm going to put the box on top again, and I'm going to trim it widthwise to somewhere just over there. So we've now got our lid, oversized, so I can come with a belt sander and sand this flat. I'm going to try one of these grippy router mats for this, never tried this before so it may or may not work, there's a lot of talk in the belt sander, but I just want to give it a go. I'm going to come in with an 80 grit, well used 80 grit paper, we'll see how that takes it down. It's not a big area now, so we shouldn't be too bad. Okay. We were aiming for about a thickness of 15 millimetres and we've got, well, would you look at that, 15 and a bit millimetres, which is fantastic. So yeah, pleased with that. So, in the end, I came down with a 40 grit paper in this. I did use the, um, the router mat, it worked incredibly well, but I did notice that the torque of the sander did twist the board now and then, so I just put a couple of dogs here in the holes and a block here and then just wedged it into the corner and that worked beautifully. Nice a lot of dust, if you like sawdust, we've got plenty here. Um, good job, so I'm going to clean the bench down and then we'll just do a bit of light sanding on this to clean the glue edges up. I just want to clean this up slightly, just get rid of these glue marks, but I don't want to go mad on this. So I'm going to come in, first of all, very very lightly with my orbital on a low speed and I'm going to come in with an 80 grit paper just to clean up these edges, it doesn't need much work. And then I'll run over this board with the H as well, because this is actually 40, so it's quite a rough texture. And then I'll come over 120 on both of these. That will stay at 120, because it's taking an oil. And then I'll just polish this up with a 320, because this is taking a paint. So let's get that job done. Now 
best thing I want to do is to bring this lid down to its actual size. So I'm going to line up the box with an outside, a couple of outside edges, making sure it's all nice and square, and it is. But then again, it should be, because we used our fence and our track saw. And that's looking pretty good to me. Now I'm just checking this board here. Now I've noticed here on this corner, I just slightly rounded over that corner with the belt sander. So I'm going to try and cut that corner away. So I'm just lining this up here and yep, I can get rid of that corner, which is absolutely stunningly superb. And I'm happy with that. So, just going to put that on the top as well to check I like everything and make sure there's no obvious dints, dinges, marks on the board that's going to bite me. And that's going to be nice. I like that a lot. I like that a lot, a lot. So I know I'm going to be cutting off this edge here and this edge here. So that's going to be the waist on our board. So I know that this edge here and this edge here are my reference edges because they lined up perfectly to the box so we know everything's nice and square. And I'm going to use the box itself to set out my marks here. So the first thing I'm going to cut is the width. So I'm going to take this edge off here. So I'm going to come in with my box and you see this here, do you see this track mark? I know that the inside of that track mark is where my track saw cuts. So I'm going to come in here with my box and I'm going to bring this edge here to the inside edge of that track mark, which is going to be bang on there. And I'm going to bring up my flag stop to that point, triple check myself, and I'm going to lock that in. Now that distance from there to there is my first cut. And I know my reference edge is going to be good, so I can now trim that end off. I'm also just going to put a bit of clamping pressure on this end of the board to push it into that fence. To make sure everything's as good and as tight as it can be. Okay, now I can make that cut. Now that has actually come in slightly, slightly oversized, which is good, I guess, so we can sand that down to perfection, which is nice. Good. <laughs> Looking gorgeous. Right, so now what we do is the same for the length. Bring my box in so it's lined up against that edge. Give me the flag stop. Now given that this side, this side, and this side are all now square, I've just noticed here on that corner that I've still got that slight dip. So I'm going to cut it out. So I'm going to turn this over. So that end we marked as junk is going to be now used. And I'm going to bring that in like so. And we're going to cut off this edge here. And that's come out really well. So the only problem I've got is this front edge here just needs to be sanded smooth, which is awesome. I'm just going to clamp the lid into its position, making sure the box and the lid is flush on my bench. And now I can just use a weapon of choice to bring this down to where it needs to be. Now what I'm going to do, I'll just come with a hand plane, just to bring that down to nice. It's good. Okay. Now don't to lose. Oh yeah, that's gorgeous. Now don't to lose that orientation we've just made. With that box lid. So I'm just going to put here a little F for front, and on here. Little F for front as well. 
So I was thinking about other ways you could have approached that. You could have used a hand router, you know, a little trim router like the Bosch one that we've got, lined up two of your edges, then run around with a pattern bit inside there, and it would have got you to the same, to the same place, uh, but using power tools. But now and then I think it is nice to break out the hand tools and just get involved a little bit more with that. And I do love hand tools, as you probably know. And one of the reasons I built the bench, of course, is so I could use more hand tools in the woodworking. So true hybrid approach. Now the next thing I want to do is to actually put the hinges on this. Now, I've never used these hinges before, but I think they're gonna be quite sweet. These are very, very small jewelry box hinges. What I'm going to do is to route a small slot into these sides, it's a full thickness of this, so the hinge would lie flush with the top. And then I can just surface mount it onto, onto the oak. These are about 5.96, 5.98, 6.1 at the end. 6.08, 6.06, so probably somewhere about a six and a bit router bit see what we've got and in my collection i have this baby here which looks like a 6.35 now that's good isn't it 6.35 sounds like a good size so obviously the box is 12 millimeter stock and we want my hinge to be bang on in the center so i'm going to come back in with our test piece of stock and i'm just going to try and center this bit and which is why i'm using the anchor fence because it gives me much tighter control so i'm going to come in first of all just with a an eyeball and just winding the fence back until it gives me an eyeball of the center, which is about there, and lock that down. Now I can come in and take a test cut and spin around, and then that should still be in the center and we can adjust from there. So exactly the same technique as centering this up when you're doing joinery work. So I just made that groove, straight away we can see it's not centered. But I can now bring this any other way around. And I just want to take it back to about there. And while we're here, we'll just check that for depth. And fit, oh look at that. That's gonna be nice, isn't it, don't you think? Perfect. And so the next thing is to work out how far down I want to come. So no harder putting it in its position here. In with a square. Small mark. And the square the small mark across. Just a bit of small mark there at the outside of the cutter. And now I can line that up to there. And that's where I want that to come to. So now I'm gonna take another cut, another test cut with this piece, and that should be the right depth, the right length, and in the center. Let's give that a go. And it's a gorgeous fit, but it needs to be a little bit longer, I think. So I'm just gonna take this back ever so slightly. And that is good. I'm happy with that fit. Now you won't be able to tell on the camera, but it's not quite flush with this. It's down a little bit and it's a little bit too far in. But don't forget, I'm going to paint this so that will fill up this hole and that will give me a nice fit inside there. So here's the front of my box. So we know that we're going to be cutting a hinge here and we're going to be cutting a hinge here. So this setup will do this hinge because obviously we're going to do it like this. So we'll get the first one cut. Whoa, and that's way too close to the eyes. I'm not sure what happened there. And I've only just, only just cut away with that. Only just got away with that. I'm not sure what happened really. Oh, it's okay, so what I now want to do is to mark up for this side. I'm just gonna mark the stop so I can find it again. And 
then I can slide the box over that area that we just made, like so. And that, when I turn it round, will give me a cut in the corresponding place. However, I'm going to bring this forward because that first cut I wasn't happy with. Just to give me a bit more meat. Just recentering that up. Okay, cool. Drop my friend back into that mark. Now this is what I was after, something that's actually in the centre here. So that's a good fit, that's what I was looking for. But this one is too far over. This is a very, very small amount of material and that's going to break over time. So I'm going to fill this, I think, um, and then reroute that piece. So it'll slow the job down, but better perfect than not. Stupid boy. Should have checked that before I cut, shouldn't I? I'm going to use this filler gel. You actually mix it with some sort of sawdust and that gives you a strong filler. It's basically an epoxy type material. It's going to flood the mistake. Deliberately got this runny because I want it to find its own level. Perfect. And I'll let that dry. Although that slowed the job down, I'd rather we redid that one to make it all nice and uh, neat than not. It'd be a shame for that to split out after all this work. Stupid mistake, eh? But we all make mistakes. It's what we do about them that counts, isn't it? I'm going to let that go off for a few hours. We'll come back together then and we'll look at the next step, which is rerouting that piece. And then I think we're at the point where we're going to spray this beast. Cool. While that's doing, I'm going to go and design the lid on the computer. See you in a minute. This is dry. You'll see it there. Blending in quite well, actually. And I'm just, with the lightest of strokes and a hard pad, so it all feels... Smooth. Good job, that. That'll spray nicely. And now, <laughs> we will try again with this cut. Okay. So I've just used the one that we made at the other end just to line this piece up. And now, we should be able to go ahead. There you go. And you never would have known that we made a mistake on that, so I'm quite, I'm quite pleased with that recovery. Excellent. And those hinges are going to fit in there beautifully. Look at those. Like it was made for it. Good stuff. So we're back on track again. So my next job, going to clean the bench down, going to put some... Um, masking material on and turn it into a bit of a spray booth and then we'll get that thing sprayed. Now at some point I will be making a portable spray booth enclosure that fits on top of the bench. Nothing more than some waterproof curtains and a rail that just allows me to cow this area off here and that'll just give me that facility. But for now, because I'm not there yet, I'm using this stuff. This is hard surface protector. Um, I use it quite a lot when I'm working in people's homes to protect, well, floors and the like, and it's self-adhesive. So I'm just going to roll it onto the bench. My finish is actually going to be this uh, Rust-Oleum chalk finish. It's a chalk paint that you can spray, which I didn't even know you could do. And when I found this, it's a bit of a game changer. But I do need to put a primer on this one. Now, normally I use bin and just paint this on, but I found that can give me a slightly blotchy surface when you're spraying. So I'm now going to try and spray this Rust-Oleum surface primer. So this should actually give me a really, really good preparation for these. That's the theory.
Well, that was rubbish. So there's my advice, don't use the Rust-Oleum spray, it's absolutely pants. I'm going to use the chalk paint itself now for a bit of primer, I think. It is quite thick, so it should soak in and seal, but we'll give it a go. Quite a light coat of this coat. This is just a seal more than anything. So we let that go off for about a couple of hours. We'll come back in, give it a light sanding, and then we'll give it a couple more coats of the chalk paint. Let's we'll see how we get on. I'll get that lot done and see you on the other side. So that's now a hard three coats of the chalk paint. Uh, chalky finish furniture paint from Rust-Oleum. This has worked really well, even though the, um, the uh, undercoat let us down a little bit. And that's quite good now. I'm quite pleased with that. It feels nice and smooth. I'm just going to give it the lightest now of rub downs with a fine paper, 240. And it's no harder than just doing that. And what I'm looking to do is just take off any blemishes, any bits of dust that are caught in the paint. Just smooth off any areas where there's a mark. And that's what I love about chalk paint. Before we get the wax on it, which is the next step, you can just smooth the surface off and it gives you a gorgeous finish. A gorgeous finish. You'll also notice I've just drilled a couple of 10 millimeter holes here as well and that's just going to take some rare earth magnets and that will just uh, keep the top in place, act as a catch. Good, cleanish cloth and that just to wipe any dust that we've just made off the surface. <clears throat> now before I wax this, I'm just going to glue these magnets in. I'm using these 10 millimeter rare earth magnets and I've just bought separately 10 millimeter metal discs. So my rare earth magnets will go into these holes and be glued in with some hot glue and then these will stick to the oak top and that looks good. I've recessed these down so they're slightly deeper than the thickness of the magnet with the metal disc attached so that top will now and fit nice and flush. So next job, I'm just going to drop these rare earth magnets in here. So the next job, I'm just going to take away the spraying area now. So once again, I'm working on the bench of a clean area and we'll get on to this next stage. I'm just going to carefully put some glue in the bottom of this hole. Like so. Let's use a cloth to take the glue away. And then make sure I've got the magnet and I'm going to push the magnet down into that hole and with those in place I can now just wax this box. Now before I wax the box let's talk about an, an, another error. Although this board looks really really nice this is the one that was off the original box. Um, it's a little bit warped but I'm going to have to use this one and the reason why is my CNC machine skills are still not where they need to be. And you can see this is a board that we made and, it's com and I completely ruined this as I was using the CNC. I was actually experimenting with a new bit on this one. I didn't realise the damage it was going to cause. And although I did manage to get on the other side a practice run, it's still poor quality. This was a very, very fine bit that I used this. It took its time, but it did a really nice job of the engrave. This was a a, a steeper V on the bit and it's made a complete mess. But I'm learning all the time on the CNC. I'm not at the point yet where I can use it perfectly every single time. And now and then I make a complete mess of something and ruin a board. Now I've no more oak in stock. So what I've decided to do to complete the project is just to go back with the original lid. Then at least we can use the box and then I'll get some more oak ordered. And then I'll come back in and I'll make a new lid. But in the meantime, I'll practice an awful lot with the CNC, put in practice the learning I've just had, and hopefully at one point in my life, maybe I'll get to the point where I've got something I actually like. But for now, I'm going to put this one back in job. As I've already said, what I love about chalk paint is you can use a very, very fine um, cloth. That's about 240 grit, and you can smooth this down to get rid of any imperfections. 
and although it will harden off as it really dries it will stay slightly soft so it's quite easy to damage a chalk paint surface so you've got to give the chalk paint some protection and that's nothing more than a coat of wax any wax will do i use black bison wax from uh, liberan um, no reason just what i tend to use because you do tend to get wedded to various brands and it's no harder than taking this putting a coat on here and rubbing it off when we've let it set in a little bit it will make it look a little bit dirty at first and you may panic but it does settle down now this will soak into the chalk paint and then it will harden off and that gives your surface the protection you can see some little speckles of grey here that's just where it's beginning to soak in but don't worry about that don't worry about that at all that's what happens now just say i've got this build up here on this edge we just want to make sure we don't have that so it's easier to just take it out now than when the wax sets off so just take out as much as you can using a small screwdriver to gently pull it out there's something reassuring and warm about the smell of wax i think and this wax once it's dried on top of the chalk paint it feels gorgeous it feels almost like a like a velvet texture it's nice really nice okay i'm just gonna let that go off now for 10 minutes or so and then we're going to come back in with a clean cloth and we're just going to give that a bit of a buff okay in a little bit of time and elbow grease we end up with a nice waxed white box next job is i want to put the lid on and i'm just lining it up so the back of the hinge is perfectly flush with the back of the box and to do that just a piece of mdf and now I can come in with a bradawl and just mark those holes there and screw those into place. Obviously the bradawl just makes a bit of a, a hole to start with and if you don't do that you're going to find that you're going to split the MDF, it's going to force itself apart. And I'm just lining up this edge here of the lid with this edge here because there's no adjustments on these hinges so it's got to be pretty much bang on I'm just marking with a brad all where that back hole needs to go and there you go all things being equal that should now hold itself up flush and it does nice and should come down square which it does so the final job I just want to put on the little metal catches for the hinges and put a little bit of paper on top of the hinge like so and the same on that side like so these are actually self-adhesive 3m self-adhesive on the back and what i'm trying to do is to get that little bracket to just stick up prow from the box And the 30 goes, <laughs> and that should be enough to just hold that on. Okay, cool. And that's now allowed me to put those in the right position on that lid. I'm not sure how good this 3M glue is going to be here. So what we're going to do, we're just going to put some handy handies on that to clamp it down while that sticky sticks so there you go error on the back and the hinges that we had to do some filling on complete mess of the top on the cnc so that's a revert back to the original top on the old box that we had i will remake this lid at some point when i get some more oak in the workshop but i had no more oak left so i had to go with what i had it's worked reasonably well the hinges are good it holds it up at 90 degrees there's enough magnetism in these rare earth magnets just to keep that lid into place but this has come out beautifully, I love this box, I love the finish of chalk paint with the, the wax on it, it smells gorgeous as well.
But yeah, that's it. If you want to build something similar, the plans will be available on the website, www.thewoodgrafter.com. They're part of the YouTube bundle. And with that said, thank you for watching. Stay safe and I'll see you next time on The Woodgrafter.